there. Welcome to another presentation of Live from the Course, co-presentation of GCSA TV and Golf Course Management Magazine. I'm Scott Hollister, the Editor-in-Chief of GCM, and I hope you are safe and healthy wherever it is you're joining us today. If this is your first time with us, welcome and a little background for you. Live from the Course is, is really our opportunity to take a few minutes to kind of check in with some of the leading figures in golf course management from all around the country and, and see how they are managing uh, their golf courses, their facilities, their staffs in the era of COVID-19 and, and how they're navigating through the changing landscape that the pandemic has created for all of us, really. Uh, we started out last week with Darren Davis. He's the Certified Golf Course Superintendent at Old Florida Golf uh, Club in Naples, Florida. And uh, if you'd like to go back and check out that conversation, you can do so by heading to the Facebook feeds for either GCSAA TV or GCM. Uh, some great stuff there. I think you'll enjoy that. And today we're excited to welcome someone who will offer us kind of a, a different perspective on everything that's taking place. And that is Ben Hodling. Ben is uh, with uh, Some Guys Backyard Golf Design and is the designer of Bro Creek National, which is uh, kind of in the GCSA's backyard, Kansas City, Kansas. And uh, full disclosure, GCM ha has, has, has done some writing uh, on the project over there. I'm going to let Ben tell you all about it. I'm not going to steal any of his thunder, but um, one of his partners in crime in that project is a former GCSA staff member, uh, Mr. Evan Bissell, who worked in our uh, IT area. And uh, I still keep him on the payroll a little, a little bit doing uh, production work on the GCSA podcast. So uh, uh, we haven't completely let him come over to your side, Ben, yet. But Ben, welcome. Thank you for uh, taking some time to join us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, to start off, uh, what, I, what I'd like to do is just kind of let you have a uh, kind of generally talk about how all of this has affected you, not really specific to golf, but just how are you personally? How is your family? How's, how's, how's there, how has all of this kind of uh, impacted your day to day life and, and what sort of things? Uh, uh, clearly, I know I'm in the kind of same metropolitan area you are, but maybe tell others uh, uh, what we're going through here in the Kansas City area. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's certainly been impactful. Um, you know, I don't do this full time, so I am working from home now uh, with my real job, if you will. And um, it's been different. It's been totally unique. Um, you know, I've been here with my fiance and spending a lot of time with our dog. and We've honestly been having a pretty good time. Now, we did unfortunately need to postpone our wedding. Uh, so that was a little wrinkle. But uh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we made the decision pretty early on and um, we didn't want to have a watered down experience. So we're going to be excited to celebrate with everybody when, you know, things are, are back to what they should be. Now, Kansas city specifically, um, we haven't been hurt or hit the hardest out of, you know, a lot of the, the cities in the United States, but we've been following, you know, strict guidelines. I think we're on our sixth, maybe seventh week of stay at home order. And uh, you know, now you're finally seeing majority of people that are outside fully wearing masks and, trying to follow the rules as best as possible so um it's been unique it's been interesting yeah i know it's a, a little bit of a contrarian stance on things but i've quite enjoyed it because it's given me the opportunity to do what i love and that is go and maintain brook creek national our you know unique unconventional short course in kansas city kansas so i've got to spend all of my you know free time doing that yes i've been you know out there alone but that's what i've always wanted to do is have this you know, unlimited amount of free time to you know, spend towards it and we've been able to do that so you know i've honestly been you know enjoying it quite a bit i, I know that that's, that's crazy to say and i, I don't um, you know enjoy the virus as a whole and, and everything that comes with it but it has brought some unique opportunities to capitalize and um you know i think that we've done just that yeah and uh i will let you kind of discuss because as, as you mentioned you use the word unconventional and 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 what you what you guys are, are doing out there really is is pretty unconventional um you've got quite a quite a following on social media quite a following on online um it's a really unique product uh, 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 product and project why don't you start by just kind of giving us a, a broad overview of what Bruff creek national is um the who, what, when, where, why, how it all came about, just so people kind of know uh, what it is and sort of how this differs from your from a traditional uh, uh, maybe 18-hole golf experience. Sure. So, Brook Creek National is a seven-hole, uh, about 650-yard par three short course golf course. Um, now, it's our, our yes 
online handle is some guy's backyard because that's the vibe that went into it, right? It's just another guy down the street that has a really cool backyard and we decided to turn it into a golf course. Um, so Broke Creek National came to fruition last year and is built 100% uh, you, from our, our online community that we've been able to um, establish. They have given us the tools that we need monetarily, um, the actual uh, you know, assistance in, in building the golf course, um, education, uh, and really just being a, a big supporter of our project and, and you know, cheerleader for what we're doing and pushed us out there to go build this golf course you know, with our, our bare hands. Um, the golf course started as just forest land in Kansas City, Kansas, right by Wyandotte County Lake, uh, completely you know, covered in trees and um, ivies and brush. And uh, we took this three acre over of land and um, you turned it into what I feel is a pretty unique, interesting golf course. Now our greens are different, right? We don't have the bandwidth to go out there and manage um, you know, really finely cut your greens. So they are zoysia greens, which generally you'll see in the Kansas City area um, you know, for fairways and tee boxes. So it's a little bit different. Um, I mean, we've joked before, we've ran a stimp on it and they run three and a half. Um, it's extremely different and <laughs> yeah, it's fun. And you know, we hope one day that once we continue to work towards our end goal, which I guess there is no end goal, but what we think is possible, um, the golf course is going to play really, really cool, and it's going to be like a blast from the past, uh, but in a you know, small, condensed area that allows you to play different things like horse or uh, cross-country holes or, um, you know, really have cool events, throw a keg right in the middle of the, the field and just play shots all day, right? Different things like that. So that, that's the vibe that we're going for. But again, it's all built with the help from our community that we've established. So we have, you know, memberships. Anyone can be a member. Um, and we hope to provide them with a unique, interesting, well-maintained um, you know, golf course experience for absolutely nothing because they've been able to help us. They support us. They are cheerleaders and they, they have uh, made a material impact. We would not be able to do anything that we've done without them. So you'll know, pay it back by um, you know, offering the course whenever we are available. Come on out. Let's play for free. Whoever you are, let's do it and just have fun. That's awesome. What, what was the inspiration of, of what, what got you guys thinking about this? What was it specifically about this tract of land that you said, you know what we could do here? We could totally make this into a into a short course. Right. So uh, a little bit of history on the, the land first. So Zach Bruff, he is our superintendent. Um, you know, he's the guy that owns the property. It's his backyard. It's been in his family for over 30 years now. Uh, he grew up there. You know, he's only lived there his entire life. Um, we met him at college in, at the University of Kansas in Lawrence, just 30 minutes away from his, his place. So we would go back to his place from time to time and just mess around. He had ATVs and four-wheeler trails and, um, you know, we could go light bonfires and have fun outside, right? So it's always been an area that we have congregated to because you know, a lot of our friends are outdoor people and enjoy, you know, having fun doing things and, um, you know, messing around outside. So it's always been a place that we've congregated at spent a lot of time at and always really enjoyed. It's quiet and there's not many neighbors, feels like you're in the country, but you're 10 minutes away from the Legends, one of the biggest shopping centers in our um, area. So it's always been a place that we've we've come to. Now, I'm very, I've always been into golf my entire life. Um, I moved in with Zach on the property right after we graduated college. This would be 2015. I saw pretty immediately, hey, if we cut down one tree, we could have a 120 yard wedge shot that we could just come out here and pound balls. So we did that. I, you know, shaped the grass a little bit, let some gunch grow up, and um, you know, shaped a hole generally speaking, and just would hit hundreds of balls here. And our friends continued to come over. We held parties from time to time where you know people would come over. We would just hit shots and play closest to the hole all day long. So fun. So then I started getting deeper down the rabbit hole of golf course maintenance, uh, what's possible. You know, from a golf course uh, perspective, kind of looked around in the Kansas City area and was a little bit, eh, there's not a ton of awesome golf here, um, especially from a, a short course, you know, unique golf perspective. So um, my desire to continue moving down an architectural, you know, I guess, perspective um, on golf continued to grow and blossom. And I knew that land like the back of my hand at that point. And I would just go to bed at night and get to thinking, wow, that would be a really cool shot. I wonder if we could do that. Is there a tree in the way for this? Right. So I would just think about it. And I, I knew it, even though it was 
the forest land because I'd been up there at four wheelers and I really just understood the property pretty well. Um, came up with a general routing and a very, very minimalistic idea of what it, what it would take, you know, minus all of the, the man hours and um, you know, work it would go into to taking out the trees and all that good stuff. Um, and kind of came up with a little bit of a plan. I don't think we realized how big it was going to get, but we're like, hey, you know, if we can get these couple of things, I bet people have these in their garage that's collecting dust, dust that they're not going to use. So maybe they'll, you know, send it our way and we can continue to do this. Um, in return, you know, join our community, whatever it was. It was, you know, kind of, it's always been a joke-ish the whole way, but it got really, really serious. And people really liked right. the idea. They liked being a part of the family or community, I guess, family, what, what have you. Um, and it grew and you know not it was good pressure it was like holy crap we really got to do this now um we opened up the idea a little bit further expanding upon what might be possible and we were able to hit that goal as well so we had everything we needed we were armed to go ahead and move forward with this and um you know we we did it so last year it, it, we put in i think it was 1400 man hours combined uh, where we were out there and and you know doing everything from you know, taking out trees to, uh, you know, trying to build bridges to, you know, moving rock to whatever it was that, that was needed to you know, build these green sites and these tee boxes and have a good flow to the golf course. So we roughed it in last year, uh, got the sod down in the middle of the summer. We had a terrible rain year, so um, we couldn't get sod until July. So 95 degrees, we put down you know, 1,400 square feet or excuse me, 14,000 square feet of um you know sod between the the you know, five or six of us we had a couple friends that, that came and helped as well but uh 17 hour day in the middle of a 95 degree day uh got it all down and then worked really hard to you know make sure it was established and uh we we you know got to the end of the year before it went dormant and you felt really good about what we had accomplished but still had you know more work to do so this winter when we could we'd go out there do things fix things you know identify things that needed to, to change or be better and, um, you know, we, we've, again, with this really odd circumstance that we find ourselves in, um, you know, unfortunately, one of us has actually been laid off and it's been bad overall, but it has opened up so much opportunity for us to, to go ahead and you know, do things that we never thought we'd get to and just open up so much time while also staying you know, distant from one another and, and maintaining those rules as well. So we've finished the rest of our infrastructure projects. The golf course is um, you know, a little bit more on the you know, completion side. I uh, still have a lot to do from a grass perspective. Um, the greens are a little bit you know, unlevel in some areas and need to do a lot of top dressing, but that is what we're working towards now. It's getting warm, the warm season grass is on, so um, that's what we're working towards now. What sort of a reaction did you get from more, I guess, more of the traditional golf course management, golf course design community, and and, and what sort of support did they provide? I, I know that in some instances you got materials and equipment and others that might have just been advice and feedback from, right. you know, people who are trained turf grass managers. How, how has that all grown throughout the project? Right. So I, I need to be very, very clear. I have no classic training in turf at all so everything that we've done it's been trial by fire from the very very beginning and without the community of people that are willing to help out this absolutely would not be possible help us you know put it there in the right direction for what we're trying to accomplish with our limited um, you know, resources and, and constraints and you know, helped us along the whole way so we've had multiple superintendents you know both local and really anywhere, everywhere um, that have been very, very helpful. We've built some really strong bonds with people that um, I feel like I can, you know, they're just a message away and I can get a, a problem or at least start on my way to answering a, a problem that you know, we might have. So um, yeah, it was more advice, listening, um, understanding it. That's been really the hardest part is because it is such limited constraints and our, our resources and, and we are very constrained and not only budget, but knowledge and bandwidth. It's you know been interesting working with some people that really get it, that understand what we're trying to accomplish, what we have you know at the, at our disposal, and creating solutions for for what we have you know going on. So um, a ton of help from those people that have uh, you know, provided their expertise, their experience, that have you know, set me in the right direction to go look up something, find something, or uh, analyze something else that I just really would never have a chance to before. So. 
um, yeah, both superintendents, you know, local and, and um, you know, really everywhere else in the United States, we've gotten a ton of help. And I have three or four guys that I feel really confident I can message pretty much at any time. And they're going to be there. They're happy, excited to help. So the response, generally speaking, from people in the golf course industry has been exceptional. Um, I think without them kind of buying in and realizing, hey, we're serious. We know that we are not educated, but we're serious and we're going to try and everything we can to do it right. Um, you know, I think they've given us the respect and and the help that we need to, to be successful. Yeah, I, th I think this particular project's been super inter interesting to follow from a social media standpoint. Uh, you guys are very adept, very active, uh, very sophisticated in the way you've, you've been able to use social media. And a great example of what, what you were just talking about is I, I, I noticed just recently um, you guys posted uh, a question about top dressing and how right. best to to you, if you can't traditionally dry it, how do you how best to spread it? And you just post a question on Twitter. I'm not. You may have done it on Instagram as well. Um, I did not see it there, but um, you got great response uh, for, for guys just chiming in. 20, 30 guys just from all over the country saying, "Hey, this is what's worked for me." Um, and and it, it seems like you guys have really just been sort of welcomed into the brotherhood uh, w without question. Yeah, and th that's been fantastic. And you know, not everybody gets it, and that's totally, totally fine. Um, we totally you know, accept that we are not experts. We are not you know, one of you, um, you know, per se, the, the people that are, are professionals in the turf industry. We try to respect that as much as we can. But, you know, like you said, it, it's been incredible, the uh, response that we've received and um, the feeling that, you know, people will put in a little bit of you know, brain power to, to try and help us solve a problem like this top dressing one. Um, there's not many people out there that are looking for a professional top dresser for around 500 bucks. So I understand that, that that's a, a very different uh, question to ask. Uh, well, uh, funding is, is is obviously for something that has grown to this uh, level is, is going to be an issue. Um, talk about the different ways that you guys have gone about, um, you know, kind of solving the, the funding issue and and how to support. I'm sure there's been a lot of money out of your own pocket that's that's gone towards uh, towards this. And but you've also you've also gotten some pretty broad support from uh, uh, from all over the country. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, kind of after we put it out there that, hey, this is our you know end goal in three to five years, we'd like to, you know, build this golf course. And, you know, here's the, the rendering design for it. Um, people started sending us stuff. So that was a, a great first step. Um, then we were like, wow, this is really going well. But just like anyone else from a charity perspective, cash is king. So we need cash. We need to be able to make our own decisions. We need to put, you know, some power in, in um, you are buying choices with, with cash. So um, we started a GoFundMe. We ran uh, ran it for about a month, and you know there was nothing that we were expected to provide besides a hey, thank you so much for donating. You know, I sent them a, a you know here's your member packet, something uh, you know kind of ripped off from like what you'd get from a, a country club, uh, some memorabilia, some stickers, a, a uh, you know, our, our bylaws, you know that silly stuff. Just trying to have fun with it. And um, that was all that, that you know, we were expected to get back and, and um, keep everybody up to date, keep everybody very much in the loop. And they know exactly what we're doing with the money and when and um, where we're at in the, the you know, progress of the build. And we were able to raise 21000 last year in just cash on a, a, on a uh, GoFundMe account. So that was when it went from, OK, this is going to be a, a cool project that we can work on for the next couple of years to like, we have everything we need to to just get this done. Let's let's go. Um, so you know we went ahead and, and did that. And you know just like anything else, we knew that there was going to be additional costs after just you know the first build. Um, you know so this year it's been mostly out of our pocket. You know up until we did a, another recent um, you know fundraiser where we um, you did a, a ball drop like you'd have at a, a member member event. And uh, you know, we asked people from you know, anywhere to come on in and, and join. And we broadcasted it live. And uh, we were able to raise just over $4,000. But uh, a strong majority, or a, I guess a strong majority goes to, to us and what we're doing. And then we have a, a significant sliver. We raised just about $1,200 um, you know, for COVID-19 first responders relief as well. So we felt really good to parlay a a fundraiser you know, for our golf course into something that, that we can you know, be pretty um, you know, consistent with what's going on in the world right now and, and give back in a, a different way. Um, you know, our membership is, is fantastic and, and you know, they did all the raising, so it's, it's all for them.
Yeah, we, you did that ball drop on April 23rd, I believe. Right. Um, and, you know, it, it, to bring this back in into a little bit of a, a discussion about coronavirus and COVID-19 in golf, um, you, you talked about it. You have more time to spend um, working on this project, but it, it probably has been more difficult. You mentioned one of your one of your crew, and I'm going to let you get throw them a, um, a little shout out here in a second. Um, you know, one of them has been has been laid off because of this. So at a time you probably most need those resources, it, it's probably stretched maybe more thin now than it ever has been, largely just because right. of the circumstances, you know, we find ourselves in. Right. No, I, absolutely. That's 100 percent true. Um, I think a lot of people are reacting to this, just the unknown by kind of keeping a hold of their money. So the fact that we were able to, um, you know, that, that our community was able to do what they were able to do at a time like this is, is really incredible. Um, we were not, we, we couldn't see, we couldn't make sense of asking for money without having uh, you know, some other way of, of utilizing it that, that matters besides just what we're doing. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I think that we were extremely clear with, with where the money was going, what we planned to do with it. And, um, you know, people wanted to support us. They also wanted to support you know, when I would get the little tags of what people were sending money for, a lot of them were, were sending for COVID-19 relief. So, yeah, that, that was what um, there came a point in the fundraising process where I didn't care anymore how much we were raising for BCN. It's all how much more can we raise you know, for COVID-19 first responders? Really. Right. So, um, yeah, it, it's been it's been really interesting. And, and you know, like you said, a lot more time to, to do things. And with such unique times, I, I'm still blown away with that people were willing to you know, part with their their money at a time like this and uh, help us out and, and help some other things out as well. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty pretty amazing time, pretty amazing to see that you know really across the board with so many people giving so much uh, back in the time. Very very encouraging to see. Uh, obviously, so this is a labor of love for you. It's also a labor of love for all the people that you're working with. So maybe just uh, you don't you don't have to be too nice to Evan if you don't want to be, but you can uh, <laughs> uh, talk about the rest of the guys uh, who who are kind of on this journey with you, right? Right now. Yeah. So, so Zach Bruff, he's our, our you know, superintendent. He's a rock. He's the guy that allows us to come over and knock on his door at 6 a.m. in the morning and say, hey, I'm going to go mow the grass. So um, he's been absolutely fantastic. Him and his family have been very open. They've given me every opportunity that I would ever need. I, I couldn't imagine being in a, a situation where I'd have more freedom to do kind of whatever I wanted you know, from a design perspective and, and you know, building the, the golf course perspective. Um, then with Zach, you know, he's been absolutely unbelievable in his, you know, I guess understanding uh, or lack of understanding in, in what we're doing and allowing us to just go ahead and, and do it, um, it, which has really been an incredible. And, um, you know, he's always the guy in the background that you know, I, I think he really likes this for the community. Um, he's really encouraged that you know, people are, are uh, attaching to this and caring about this and caring about um, his his land that he's lived on for his entire life. So. Um, you know, that, that's been, been fantastic. And, and, you know, Zach, you'll see him on the tractor. If you do follow us on social media, um, you know, that's our guy or, you know, managing the chainsaw. That's you know, his other number one and number two hobbies, I guess. <laughs> um, Evan Bissell. So, you know, as you said before, he has worked for GCSAA. Um, and he is our yeah, media guy, if you will. He does all of our uh, production stuff, but don't get me wrong. Everybody in the group puts in plenty of sweat equity and a lot of mental fortitude towards, um, you know, researching and, you know, coming up with solutions to our problems as well. So um, he just had a, a little baby. His name is Malcolm. Right. And we're happy to, uh, you know, bring him into the crew as well. So that's going to be fun to have him grow up at, at BCN. Um, and then we have Mark Robinson. He is the man behind the camera. So everything that you see that comes back or comes out from a uh, video perspective, um, you know, Mark is going to be the guy that, that shoots it. So he's not in a lot of our videos and he, he takes that, um, you know, kind of backseat, but you know, without him, we wouldn't be able to produce anything that we do. So, um, now don't get me wrong. All of us are, are you know, Evan's new in the video making space. Uh, you know, Zach hasn't managed, uh, you know, turf grass before. So, um, you know, Mark is still learning how to work with the camera. So we're all new learning and, and trying things as we go. And some are myths, some work and, um, it is what it is, but you know, everybody's been extremely passionate about it. And I think that that's what has made it work. We've all put in 110% for something that you'd consider as a you know, side hobby or a club 
um, we treat it like a business. We treat it like it's something that really matters, that, that has an impact on other people's lives and, and ours as well. And um, that's why it's it's been you know successful for, for what it is you know, so far. Um, we also have a lot of help from Jeff Dunn. He's one of Zach's best friends with the high school with him. He's been around for a long, long time and he's a handyman. He can fix and do just about anything. Um, he's always the guy that looks at me when I'm trying to make a decision on doing something quick and he says, <laughs> Well, this is what's going to happen when you do that, blah, blah, blah. And we he over-engineers everything, and it ends up awesome. So, um, yeah, Jeff's around about half the time, and, and he's been a, an awesome resource as well. That, that, that's awesome. Well, short-term, long-term, what, 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 what are, what's short-term success look like for you? How Can you guys see the finish line, at least at having a product that, hey, we're moving less from construction and more to day-to-day -day maintenance? Can you, can you see that point um, from where we are right now? Yeah, um, I think we hit that last week. We finished our last bridge where, you know, from a, a build perspective, that's just about it. The course is in, the grass is in, the grass is working. Um, you know, the infrastructure is there, so it's a more cohesive experience when you're out there. Um, now it's fine detail stuff. Uh, you know, on top of the, the regular golf course maintenance um, element to it as well, which can sometimes feel like construction, but um, you know, top dressing, I, I don't consider that to be necessarily a construction task. We're going to be doing it for years to come. So uh, we've definitely turned that corner. All the focus is going back onto the grass now and trying to provide you know, awesome conditions. We haven't had the chance to really spend a ton of time focusing on the grass. Yes, we've made some decisions. We've done some things. We've used some fertilizers and sprays and problem areas, but we've never really broadly been able to go out there and say, okay, let's get this into a you know, very nice, um, you know, cohesive you know, turf um, from beginning to end. Uh, so that's where we're going now. So I, I, yes, it's still construction. Yes, it's still rough out there. Um, but it's going to be a little bit less, uh, I guess, physically challenging in some ways. Uh, I, I just don't want to pick up any more sticks, man. I'm so dumb with sticks. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, on that property, I, I think that you're going to be dealing with that for a while. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is true. Maybe I should say chopping up 60-foot trees yes. and piling them. Yes. Done, done with that. Absolutely. Well, so that's a short-term goal. What does long-term success look like for you? What What will you look back on and go, man, this really, this really did, this really achieved kind of what I wanted, what the rest of the guys wanted to achieve with this effort? Right, yeah, so I wanna see people out there playing weekly. Uh, right now, it's kind of hit and miss. Hey, if we're out there um, and we're not really busting it on something, like, yeah, I come out and, and snag a couple of holes real quick with us, we'll walk with you and, and move on. Um, I no longer wanna feel like when people are asking to come out that, I'm, that they're taking away from my time of doing construction or doing maintenance. I wanna find a, a way where we're going out there, we're cutting the greens, it's taking, an hour or less to get it into shape. And we just go out there and have fun with people and meet a bunch of people and talk with people and learn about people and let others experience what we've created. And we hope and, and do feel that um, by building that really strong community and continuing to um, bring more people into the ideas that you know golf doesn't have to be what you see uh, on the TV. It can be a bunch of different things. At the end of the day, for 99% of us, golf is, is here to be outside and be with people and the people are the experience so you know if we can go ahead and, and uh, create a platform that continues to allow that to shine and you know maybe one day we, we'd all love to do this on someone else's property you know on on uh if someone else has a, an idea for something unique that they would like to do uh in their backyard we'd love to come out there and, and you know work on that and, and work with people and um continuing driving this idea of you know golf can be anything let's get creative let's use real grass and, and, and do cool stuff. And, um, you know, we can have something unique for one another. I think it's a lot of people's dreams to have something like what we have, you know, backyard golf course, that you pop right on out, hit a bunch of wedges, have that therapeutic experience. Um, and we'd love to be able to bring that to other people in other communities as well. Uh, but first and foremost, you know, I guess not quite a short-term goal, not quite a long-term goal would be to have people coming out, you know, pretty regularly experiencing something fun, interesting, not taking a huge amount of time from us from a, a maintenance um, perspective, but still doing it right and still advancing in our skills as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've had the opportunity to come out. It was like, 
I think about, about this time last year, maybe a little bit later uh, moving as we moved into the summer when, when we came out, uh, a work in progress there. I'm super excited to, to get back and kind of see the progress that you've made clearly yeah. and following along uh, with social media. And I think in this era when so many of us have been cooped up uh, for so long and when this, when this all hopefully passes and we return to some semblance of normal, uh, there's no better place to get a little fresh air take a little walk, hit a few shots, have some fun right. uh, than a short course uh, like Rogue Creek National. So um, how, how, if people want to help, Ben, how, how can they best get in touch with you guys and, and get more information about the project? Yeah, absolutely. So our uh, website is simguysbackyard.com. Um, very easy. You can reach us any way on, on any social media channel that uh, you know you've got us on so instagram and, and twitter we are very active on facebook too um can reach out anytime i'm excited and enthusiastic about talking to you about what you know you might be able to help us with or um have any questions about what we're doing or if you want to come play in a couple months let us know and we'd like to, to work with you um however um now you know I, I we do need help there's no doubt about it um it's still you know we're still working through um limited resources so if somebody wants to you know, contribute monetarily or if they have something that they'd like to share uh, some knowledge that they have that that could be helpful or a piece of equipment whatever it might be um email us at someguysbackyard at gmail.com uh, we do have a gofundme you can look up rough creek national on gofundme and that is still live active and ready to go um, your money is going directly 100 percent back to the golf course uh, to its conditioning to its progress and allowing us to you know, present something um, online and, and engage with you know, our, the, the folks that, that follow what we're doing. So um, yeah, shoot me an email, anything on social media, any way you'd like to help or, or try and contribute. Um, it's greatly appreciated. And we'd love to, to you know, find a way to make that work. That, that, that's great. And uh, at last check, at least as of this morning, you guys were just a few followers short of 10,000. I know, I know. <laughs> People watching this, you could push them over the edge. So yes. head out there, follow them on Twitter. It's it's, it's a fun follow. Some 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 great conversation. Uh, and, and Ben, I, I really appreciate your time uh, today joining us to kind of talk through this. Uh, hope you, your fiance, are safe. Hope your wedding someday is as spectacular as you want yeah. it to be, because you guys will yeah. definitely have a memory of of how you got started uh, uh, with, with something like that. So thanks. So thanks again for your time today. Yeah, no, thank you so much, Scott. I, I do appreciate it. And everybody at you know, GCSA, I appreciate you guys. And thanks for um, allowing us to, to be here, even though you know, we're not professionals like you. So um, really do appreciate it. Thanks for having us on. It's been great. Uh, just a reminder before we go, uh, you'll be able to uh, to find these conversations uh, on GCSA TV's Facebook page and uh, the Facebook page of GCM Magazine. We're going to continue to do these uh, for however long people uh, show an interest in it. Um, you can also find a lot of additional content specific uh, to golf and coronavirus on the GCM website, which is gcmonline.com. You'll just look for the coronavirus link in the upper right hand corner of the page we are still even as of this week uh we're still telling the stories of people in in golf course management uh and how they're navigating their way through this this time and, and there's also a bunch of different resources available at uh, gcsa tv and also gcsa.org on the website there uh on the main home page you'll find a link to all the COVID 19 resources so if you're a turf grass manager trying to figure your way through this there's a lot that can help you there uh, including a new guide that went up this week called back to golf that uh, offers advice resources and information on how best to get your golf course ready to reopen to golf golfers even uh if cups are raised and carts aren't allowed uh so things like that so a lot of great stuff out there we look forward to doing this again real soon on the facebook pages of gcsa tv and gcm magazine uh ben thank you again for your time today thanks appreciate it and thank you all for tuning in once again i'm scott hollister the editor-in-chief of gcm magazine thanks for your time today stay safe stay healthy and we will see you again next time